one. I hope you're excited to be learning about weaving today. Today we're going to be focusing on Argentina and in caves we have discovered that there were weavings created centuries ago, so long ago. We found them in caves and it's so cool to see the history and see how it's important to the culture. So we're going to be learning how to weave ourselves. So I'm going to be showing you some different images of some examples of weavings because there's a lot of different techniques we can do. We can just go over, under, over, under, fill up the whole loom, or I'll be showing you some different kind of styles that we can do. So you, if you look close to the Winfield Public Library, you can pick up a craft kit, which will include a loom, aka a piece of cardboard with slips in it, which you can make yourself out of a cereal box, and some yarn and a needle. And if you don't have a needle at home, then you can use either your hand, that can work, or a little piece of plastic to help separate the strings on the board, because all you have to do is over under. So it's not too hard to just do with your hand, but we'll go over some different techniques of what you can do. So if you look close to the library, you can pick up a kit, or if you're watching it later and there's not any more available, then you can go grab a cereal box and create with us. So go grab your supplies, and let's get started. So when we're setting up our loom to weave, I want to show you a few examples. This is a cardboard, piece of cardboard from a box where you can go ahead, you can take a ruler and you can measure out. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be super close together. Um, this is about a quarter of an inch. I marked every quarter of an inch and then I sliced it. So you do need to be careful, a quarter of an inch here. Do the same thing down here. If it's slightly off, it will run at an angle. So you mark it and you cut it and you can do any size. Smaller ones might be good for like a little bookmark. Um, they do take a long time to complete. So just know the bigger you go, the longer it's gonna take you. So here, so these strings here that run up and down are called the warp. Then this is the next stage where you've started, you have your warp, this is called your weft, and we're gonna go over under. So we do the opposite of what was right before. So where it ends here, we were under, now we're gonna go over, under, over, under. We're gonna keep on going. I'll show you that more closely in a moment. Here's another one that started. I did long and skinny on this one, so it is like a bookmark. So think about the size that you're making and that way you can think about what is this purpose? purpose? Is it going to be a coaster? Is it going to be where you combine lots of little pieces into a bigger one? You can even make a blanket or you can make a really, really big one and you know you can make a warp your loom out of something even bigger than a piece of cardboard. So it's up to you how you want to get started. Now you can use a needle that will be easy to go over under. You could also use a piece of plastic with a little hole cut in it. You see that this can also work or again you can use your hands and just pick it up. Normally with my students at school we just use our hands but a needle does make it go a little quicker for picking up those threads. So you can see there you go. I'm going to put these aside and we are going to wind our own warp now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this string and we're going to be making our warp. So we're going to tape the tail on the back side and it can be any kind of tape. This doesn't matter. It's just so it doesn't move on us. And I'm giving myself enough so I can tie it later. And we're gonna slide it in our first little slot. We're gonna come down. And now we're gonna wrap around. So we're not wrapping our loom like that. We are gonna be going, and you might need to move your loom a little bit. Yours might have bigger slots than mine. And now we bring it down and then it wraps around. So here's the back side so you can see it. So that's what it looks like on the back. Then we bring it down. 
and we're going to keep on going. And you can do this with any color. You can even change your color. If you decide to change your color, then all you have to do is cut it here, tape it again, and then start another one. Okay, so that's all you have to do. But I'm going to keep with the same color. And it's okay if your loom is starting to bend a little bit and like curve, if you're using a thinner cardboard, that's okay. That's just gonna give you some space to wrap your yarn. And we're getting to the end. And now you don't even have to fill up your hole loom if you don't want to. You could only do part of it. Now we're here on the last one. So we're going to cut off our extra and just leave a little tail like we did at the beginning. There you go. Here is our loom. You can see it goes every other where you're seeing it. So now we're going to start with our tabby weaving. So when we start, we're going to start at the top and I'm going to put my string starting over here and we're going to work our way this way. So you can use a needle or you can use a piece of plastic cut with a hole or you can just use your hand. For this video I'll be using a needle just so you can see it nice and easy. So we're going to be going over, under, over, under. So I'm going to start under, over, under, over. You can see I'm going over the warp. So this is called the weft. And we're going to go under, over, we're over, we're underneath the weft, we're under, and we're going to go back and forth. This is called a tabby weaving. We're going to go all the way till we get to the end. And now we're going to pull our yarn through. And you can decide how much of this color you want to do. I'm just going to cut it off here. I'm going to use that much of my green. I'm going to tape my tail to the end. Because at the end we will knot these. Now, to go again, you're going to start the opposite of whatever it ended. So we were under our warp, so now we're going to go over, under, over, under, over, under. You might need to help by picking them up. I'm using my other hand to help pick up. And then we pass it through. And now we push it up. You could use a piece of cardboard to push it up. Now you don't want to pull too tight. You see how that's pulling in? That's too tight. We don't need it that tight. We want to let it have its space. We want to keep these columns very even. So we push it up. And now we're going to go again. So where is it here? Are we over and under? We're over there, so now we're going to go under. Now you could think of a design before you get started. It could be a pattern like green, blue, green, blue, or it could be more abstract than that. After a few more rows of this, I'll show you a couple more techniques. Push it up. I'm going to pull. So it's snug, but not pulling it in. So now you can see, you can see a little bit of the warp. So that's why you want to think about the color of the warp that you're using. Now you could keep doing this technique all the way through your entire weaving. 
or you can change it up. So I'm going to end my green right here. And I'm just going to tape my tail to the end. Now you can knot your colors together right now or we can deal with finishing them at the end. So I'm going to start with a new color now for my new technique. I'm going to show you some interlocking. So we're going to start here. We're going to go over, under, and I'm going to decide to go halfway. And I'm going to stop. Leave my tail. I can tape my tail to the end. And now I'm going to go back. So I'm over this one, so now I'm going to go under. Remember, make sure it doesn't get pulled. Over, under. And now I'm going to show with another color what the interlocking looks like. So we're going to start from this side. I'll leave a little bit of space right there and up there. You can see I just really easily pushed it down. So we're going to go over under, over, under, over, under. And then here we're going to go over, then under, over, under, over. So we incorporated that string right there. Now we're going to go over, under, over, under. And again, we're going to incorporate oops, and we're going to do that one more time. Under, over, under. And now you can go ahead and push that nice and tight up and you can see how that interlocks right there. I'm going to cut off my extras and those can be put to the back and taped. At the end we'll deal with all of our tails. There we go. So that's interlocking. Now we can do bubbling. I'm going to use this fun color changing thread for my bubbling. So remember we do the opposite that's here, so that's under. So we're going to go over, under, over, under. 
but I'm just going to do a row or two normal before I start doing my bubbling. And right away I'm going to tape my tail so it doesn't get in the way. Now I'd recommend for you guys to be knotting your tails together. So now we're going to go over, under. And you can play with what happens when you don't do over, under, and if you do two overs. Now I'll start to play with bubbling. So we're going to go over, under, and at any point you can decide to leave some space. So we could go like that and then we could fill that in later with a different color. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that thread on the side and fill that in. And this is where you can really play with your colors. So we're doing the opposite of right here. So it's over, under, over. And we will be skipping that last one. Don't forget to leave your tail. So this is kind of like interlocking. It's like interlocking with bubbling. And this is where you can start to really, you can make a pattern, you can make an image, or you could just keep it abstract. This blue kind of reminds me of water. And you can even run the thread through twice, like at the same time, if you want to make it thicker. Oops, and see, I did the wrong way that time. So it just completely pulled out. You can see I'm starting to drop parts of the warp over here. So it makes that V, that angle. So that time I skipped two. I push up to see how much further can I get. So this time I might skip three. I could keep skipping or I can push my bubble up. Kind of like how that looks so far. I can cut my extra off here and I can keep going with this orange one again that I bubbled.
I really like that bubbling technique. So I could do even more of it. I'm just doing a couple rows of my tabby weaving. And then we'll try another technique. So once you get good with your tabby weaving, then you can start to look into other types of weaving, other different styles and formations. You can do so much with a loom. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this off with a tabby. Maybe I'll do a couple more bubbles because I really do like the bubble. have the bubble kind of go like that and I'm going to continue with what I have left on the needle before I fill in my bubble this time and you can play with different kinds of textures like I have this one I might put in there because I like that texture or maybe even this you can play with different scraps of yarn that's the great thing about a loom you don't have to have all the same to complete your project or your piece of art. I can even take my needle to push it up to get it nice and tight. And I think on this one, I'm gonna not even complete it over here. I'm gonna now kind of do that interlocking I'm going to finish off with this and then I'll fill in the other side with a different color. And that's going to be my tail. Now doing a yarn like this can be a little more tricky because it has so much texture and it's going to want to get caught and snagged. But I think it's going to be so pretty. I'm just getting it through this needle. There we go. So now we do the opposite, so under over. Sure you don't catch your tail. This is why I do tape it on the back.
Now I'm just going to keep going until I fill up the rest of my space. So you can go as far down, you saw I pushed it up so I didn't have any of the warp showing. Um, and that really condenses it, but it's so nice and thick. So I could keep going or I can get it off now and tie it up. You don't have to fill up your whole loom. You can decide when it's the right uh, time to stop. I kind of like, kind of reminds me of like water and a sunset. I could go ahead and do a little bit more but that's up to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my tail. I don't really need to tape this one because now actually we're gonna untape all of our ends and we're gonna finish our ends. So now I'll take these and I will knot them. You could have been doing this as you go or you could have been tying these together. Now we are going to slip our warp off. Now you could cut these right here or you could have them come off. So you might have to bend your loom a little bit for them to slip off. Here we go. We're just going to get them all off. Here we go. Now those will be knotted together. Now this one's going to be easier to get off. Be gentle doing this. Because once it's off, it's much harder to fix mistakes. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to knot them. I'm just going to take this one to this one. So I don't even have to do any cutting. I'm just not yet, anyways. And you could leave those on or you can trim them short. You could also cut them and then knot them. You also don't necessarily have to do this step. It depends on how tight you made it and the style that you want. Now we can go ahead and cut off all the extra. Or you can leave it as a tassel. So here is my finished weaving. I could use it as a coaster. I could use it as a bookmark. I could have gone longer, narrower. I could have done half the size. But I really like where I did these bubbles. Those I really had fun with. And I really, I see a sunset. I see like a landscape happening. Like whereas this is the earth and then a little bit of the blue sky, the sunset, a little bit of white of clouds in the blue sky. So you can really make it into a painting. So I hope you had fun making your weaving. I think mine came out so cute. I love how it looks like the land and the sky and some sunset. I really had fun pushing the bubbles and the different areas. Now I did mine really tiny but you can make yours as big as you want. Though just know the bigger you go, the longer it's gonna take. So I really like how mine came out. It's very strong, it's very thick because I pushed it up so nice and tight. Originally when I was making it, it looked really big, but then I slid it up 
and it actually didn't use too much. And I love this little textured yarn that I used. So play with colors, play with design, and see what you can make. And remember, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the Winfield Public Library so you get notified every time we post a new video, and tag us on Facebook with how your weavings came out. We'd love to see it. And remember, you can use your looms over and over and over. So I hope to see you next time. Bye, friends. <coughs> Oh! <laughs>